It's about an hour early. I wanna make sure I get a good spot because parking is tight and if I'm gonna get a lot of stuff, I don't wanna be walking really far, taking a chance of slipping on all this snow and everything with all these heavy boxes. So I'm just gonna hang out, respond to some YouTube comments, Facebook stuff, and uh, then next thing you're gonna see is us heading on in there. All right, so I started off by heading down the basement stairs as usual. There was a little opening up top that gave me a little sneak peek of what was down there. I love a good sneak peek, so I was excited to see what was there. Uh, coming off the basement stairs, it was obvious that there were going to be multiple sections to explore in this basement, uh, but I didn't want to get bogged down in that tool room first, so I started by uh, going into the original sneak peek room here because there was, that sounds bad, a sneak peek room, but anyway, there, was, um, there were toys and stuff to the left, these magazines. I started off by picking up those two digests there, the car repair one and the... Uh, uh, popular science one. I love selling those little digests from the 50s and the 60s and I just sell them off in lots. The Motor Trend magazines you saw I wasn't interested in. Uh, just too modern, not enough interest in them. Same thing with these American Rifleman magazines. They're old, but they're really not that valuable. So I, I left them uh, behind. Uh, but I have had good experience selling these uh, Sterno stove and fuel uh, combo packs or emergency packs, things like that. It's just a great brand. Uh, you could see someone sold uh, this one here for $21.50 recently, but that was at auction. I could probably do better by putting it as a buy it now. Um, this is funny because I actually just sold two of these the other day for 15 bucks. If you haven't seen them before, keep an eye out for them at estate sales uh, or garage sales. They're the California Raisins. Uh, they came out in the 1980s, and they were originally made to advertise uh, raisins for uh, SunMade, and they were like a rhythm and blues uh, group, and they were really very popular, won lots of awards and everything, lots of great uh, TV commercials and things. For only, only two bucks for that was great. You can see here someone sold 12 of them for 35 bucks. Uh, I could probably do better than that. So I was real excited uh, to grab those. Uh, so make sure you pick them up if you see them. Now, this really drew my attention. Now, it, just the colors of it were really cool, and it made me wonder what this would look like if it worked. So I had to get a battery in there. I did, and listen, this is one of the coolest guns ever. All right, so I picked it up for a dollar. You can see here someone sold it for 15 bucks and someone's trying to sell it new now at auction for $25 plus $8.47 shipping. But uh, I don't know. I think I could probably do better than that. I picked up this little Jackson ball thing, uh, 15 bucks. Uh, that has sold for recently. So that's one. They don't even count that when I go to check out. Now this, you have to pay attention to this. It's so important. Michigan Rummy. Look at that. This has sold in the past for as high as $54. You always want to pick up Michigan Rummy. This one's even more special, though, because when you turn it around, it has the Aces High horse racing game. I came home, listed it, and sold it for $60. It already sold. So you'll see that that more than covers what I purchased everything for today. So everything you see here, including this cool picture of these... Uh, women from 1929. Um, this paper that I picked up in the beginning, it was by the magazines. I just, I just didn't show it. Uh, this is from um, uh, Michigan and just hope that someone remembers this store, this Firestone uh, store and um, you know wants a little bit of a nostalgia. Firestone Neds. If anyone is watching from Michigan, remembers Firestone Neds, let me know in the comments. I put that in there to uh, protect it, but I do show it on uh, checkout. I just don't want it getting damaged when I carry it around. But everything you're gonna see that I pick up from now on, you could consider it as zero cost of goods because again, my total is less than what I sold that Michigan Rummy game for. Um, now look up top, I always say look up top. This is the tool room now that I showed you when we first walked down the basement stairs because there were lots of things that were hanging off of the rafters there. Stuff that had never been opened, new old stock, in package. Look for stuff like this. Flotec is a great brand, F-L-O-T-E-C, and people will buy old plumbing stuff, 
there's a lot of people who love old Radio Shack stuff, you know, since they're not around anymore. If you could find stuff like this, new in package, pick it up and put it in there. And, um, you know, this is stuff that they're not going to charge a lot for. It is another great example. Like, it's, it's something a lot of people would pass by, right? Like this uh, drain unclogging uh, system by Drain King. But look, you know, this sold for 25 bucks, And I think the cheapest right now that it's online for is around 30 bucks. So, you know, these are types of things I want to clue people into. Something like this, like this, um, a nice little tool here by General. Uh, this is awesome. The box being decorated on multiple sides is cool. Uh, someone has one right now for 20 bucks plus shipping. So I'm hoping to be able to get like 20 to $30 out of that one. Uh, those are some gloves I actually picked up for myself. And this is a cool craftsman gun. Keep in mind, uh, not gun, but I'm thinking of guns because of the gun, but electric drill. Uh, the model number there has a period in between. Make sure you type in that period if you're checking comps. Uh, this also had... Uh, the attachment on it to position things well, but now we need to test it out. So as you can see here, this drill has sold for about $40, but that's without the precision guide attachment, the portal line. That itself sells for $25 plus eight bucks shipping. And then this is a Black and Decker jigsaw, so we need to test this one out as well. All right, that one sold for over $40, so now let's test this hot air gun. All right, I hope you're feeling nice and warm and snuggly now. As you can see, that one sold for $25 without the box and in worse condition. So I'm hoping that mine having the box will help it sell for $30 or more. Now, this is the room to the far right of the basement. I walked right over to the bookshelf area and I saw these two laying on top. Don't pass this type of stuff up. They're easily missed. It's an owner's manual and a songbook to a vintage digital piano. Someone's trying to sell those for $30. They have a track record of selling, so I should be able to do well on those. I like looking through boxes of magazines to see if there's anything that might be hiding in there. This is a good example, this Shooter's Bible, which is actually a vintage catalog. I love selling vintage catalogs. People love looking through uh, all the different pictures um, of the items. They love reading about them. This one is obviously devoted to guns and ammo, but as you can see, as I'm skipping through those pages, there's also information about supplies and books related to the topic area. You have to check the comps because they're not all worth something, but this one specifically has sold for $22 recently, so easy decision to grab that one. Sometimes you have to go based off of gut. This Edward Kettner uh, catalog is a good example. It's written in German. It's a German brand. They're known for fashion, but they did have these older catalogs that had guns and ammunition information in there. So I'm hoping that would go to a specialty collector who'd be interested in that. Here's two Sears Tools catalogs. Also look between magazines to make sure you're not missing out on any little small books like these far side books that could be hiding. I always grab those, lot of them together and they always sell well. Carding ideas, it's a hard uh, one to find, but it's in a nice specialty area. So I grabbed this, I zoomed in on Fawcett Books, which is a great publisher to look out for. Uh, so keep that one in mind. Again, these small rectangular digest books, I love them. Um, this goes back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Uh, these are two electronics ones that I uh, picked up as well. And you can mix and match uh, titles from the same genre and they'll still sell well. Photo stills, I love looking for those. Uh, these two are related to uh, old cars. And, you know, as a pretty woman there, you know, a guy who's dressed up nice, that helps sell things well. Speaking of pretty women, you know how much I love cheetah print. So uh, shout out to Mrs. Primetime and, of course, all the Jersey girls watching. I didn't pick that up because it's a dime a dozen, those types of blankets, but I had to give it a shout out in the video. 
Now, this one here is interesting. It is uh, from the 1980s. It's a nice, big, and thick gun manual, an ammunition manual, but it's not made by a big company per se. It's by this Creekside gun shop. But you see, I checked the comps, and even though I can't find the exact same one, I could see that there is an interest in something that has that gun shop associated with it. So I decided to pick it up. Cookbooks I normally pass, but if it's something strange like this hippo cookbook here, no, you're not cooking hippo meat, obviously, but the hippo character is, uh, you know, just designed to facilitate the recipes in the book. It's from 1969. It has sold for as high as 20 bucks, so easy decision to grab that one. So look for strange things when it relates to cookbooks. So we finished up in there. I turned around, looked in this cubby area. There wasn't anything uh, really of value in there. Uh, sometimes I'll pick up these vintage sprayers, like these insecticide sprayers and stuff, uh, cedar sprayers, but that one uh, just is too common, wasn't worth anything. Those are my boxes. They're nested within one another, just showing you what I'm using to carry all this stuff around the house with. It's essential for me to be able to get this much volume. The rest of this room didn't really have anything of interest, although look at, there's another sneak peek area. Uh, boy, that's that's just amazing. This, I, we're going to see another one too. This guy, has, he, he loves a sneak peek. So uh, I'm going to grab the uh, box here, walk up the stairs. And um, there wasn't anything on the second floor really. Um, there wasn't even a lot of space. The stairway was pretty narrow. There's the other sneak peek hole I was telling you about there. So uh, keeping tabs for sure on what's going on. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that in these older houses. Um, you know, short staircases, narrow hallways, and this was the room uh, to the left. There was a, a little plastic tubby with matchboxes in them, which you should look for, but those had all the matches taken out, so I passed. This was a cool piece by Sears. It had all the radio tubes in it. I couldn't tell how much of it had been customized because I couldn't find a model number. There was a serial number on it. It was mounted onto the wood plank. I don't mind picking up big, heavy things, but I would have wanted to know more about it before making a decision on purchasing it. So if anyone knows more about uh, identifying them more easily, let me know in the comments section for sure. This is a cool match uh, book cover album or match cover album. And, um, you know, there's some spotting on the first page, but it doesn't matter. It's the inside that people really want. Someone's selling one right now or trying to sell one for $25. And uh, it, it has sold in the past. So I should be able to do uh, well with that match uh, book uh, for display purposes. This room was really cool. This one was very exciting, but it's the type of room that people get easily overwhelmed with because of how much stuff is in there, especially if there's a lot of paper items. So I wanna take you through how I process a room like this because a lot of people just walk in and out. They just can't handle it. I'll grab a few books or a few items, wherever it is, and just take a look at it just to give me a sense of what's there. And initially, these are all things that I'm interested in, all things I want to pick up. They're all from the 1950s, 1940s. There's even one that goes back to the 1930s that you'll see uh, a little bit later. And so, um, you know, I needed a place to put stuff that I was interested in and to also move things that I wasn't interested in. Now, some people are going to ask me, why not just buy all of them? I get that question a lot. And don't get me wrong. If all of them were ones that looked like they had value or if most of them did, here you could see a few of these sold for 25 bucks, then I would make an offer on all of it. But the problem is, as you'll see, there's a lot of stuff in there that just isn't desirable to have and I don't want to grab that stuff. So I have to make some space. So take stuff off to make space. Just create stacks so you have an area to put stuff. So I had to move the stuff to the right as well. So you could see I just shifted it over. So now I have an area where I could put stuff that I want and I could put stuff that I don't want. And then I just start breaking things down into smaller sections. So for example, I go into this area uh, over here and I start just sorting through the magazines. And you know, these ones up top are ones that I want. I showed you this one a little earlier. That's a more modern one, but it's you know a German uh, brand and it's harder to find. So I decided to uh, grab that one. But so while I want these ones off the top, these ones down here, I don't want, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in rock and ice. There's not a bunch of people out there that are interested in that type of magazine. 
there's not a lot of people who want, um, you know, for example, you're going to see a bunch of travel and leisure magazines. Here they are right here. Uh, there's just not a market for that. So if I were to have made an offer on all this stuff, I would have had to grab all that. And I don't want to take that on. So if I could take the time to just use a process to sort through this stuff, that will help. Make sure you're going down to the bottom. That's very important. Things hide down there. This is a great example. The Art of Kissing from 1936. If you need to get a book about this, you're probably doing something wrong, but um, nonetheless, they had it back in the day, the different types of kisses, little pecks, the different shapes of lips uh, are even detailed there. There's poems about kissing in this one. There's also a section on the vacuum kiss. So uh, uh, nice picture there. So the good old vacuum kiss. So now over here, uh, you could see I'm um, you know, making some progress. And I looked over and I couldn't believe that this was here. Uh, one of the ladies who was running the state told me that she she found this. It was thrown in the trash. So you know she she put it over there. I went over, grabbed it. I couldn't believe it. I love Bob's Big Boy stuff. Uh, vintage menus, they sell well. Here you could see one that sold for $27 plus $8.80 shipping. It's different from the one I have, but it still makes the point. Those do sell well. Uh, so this is the stack uh, that I decided to get. And rather than you hearing me talk through this, I'm just going to just play a little music in the background for you. And you could see some of the titles and a few comps here and there.
And this is the last one you haven't seen, this German catalog. The ones underneath you saw in the beginning. This was the last room to look through. There were lots of books. I did not find anything in there of value, but I did peek in the closet, found this really cool uh, German shirt, nice and bright and colorful. Picked this one up and headed over to check out. All right, we're out of there. So this is the total haul in these two boxes here. Uh, I was really happy with the overall price. Remember, those magazines were priced a dollar a piece, and I cherry-picked them. So these two stacks here are all magazines. Total price for everything. She did all the magazines for me for $8. I got everything total here, these two boxes, for $51. I cannot believe it. This is incredible. I can't wait to start working on this lot. Well, that definitely was a ton of fun. I worked really hard in there. I mean, I was in there for hours, so I am starving. I'm going to get some pizza and some wings, and then we'll head back to PTHQ for the wrap-up. I was so hungry that I didn't even film the pizza that I ate, but these char-grilled barbecue wings were to die for. Oh, my God, so good. All right, let's see Daisy. I think she's waiting to see us here. There she is. What's up, Daisy? <laughs> Hello. I brought you home some pizza. I brought you home some pizza. You want some? You want some pizza? <laughs> What's up, Daisy? <laughs> so many noises this thing makes. <laughs> it's the best gun ever. <laughs> I'm going to drive Mrs. Goddamn nuts with this thing. <laughs> and before you go, don't forget to check out Amanda's amazing assortment. Amanda is a member here of the channel. All members get a link to their eBay store in the description section and in the comments of one video. It's one of the many perks of membership. If you get something from her, tell her primetime said hi. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you at the next one, everyone. Take care.